let's talk about tips and tricks. What are the special other little tidbits that I can share with you to enable you to do even more with Page Builder? If you start with one of Page Builder's sample reports, it may have more pages than you need, or it may not have enough, or you, maybe you plan to print some pages on letter size paper and others on larger engineering size paper. We'll look at how to make all the pages just right. There are two ways to zoom in and pan in Page Builder. I alluded to those to that earlier, with two different results. We'll look at those. If you have a large project as we do, such that when zoomed extends, you can't read the calculation grid, if you then zoom in on the grid in Page Builder, you may not see it at all. Why does that happen and what can be done about it? You may want to save a report format that you've created as a new existing report that you can use for future projects. That's easy to do. And we'll look at where the Page Builder report files are saved on your computer so that you can share them with someone else if you like. The note, it tells you right here, I'll refer to this later, um, but it, it does say right here where they're saved. And finally, we'll look at how to save your report as a PDF file. We're going to go back to the roadway file that we've been working on to see how to do these things. That's this one, right? Confirming. Yep, there's the roadway file. Let me go back to page builder. So this is master page, now on to page one. Ah, on page one, even though this page was blank when we added it, it now has all the content from the master page. If we had wanted it to remain as it was and not take on the content of the master page, then we would have, we would have to, um, have, we would have had to lock it, <laughs> get the English right. Uh, if we want it to stay the way it is, it's easier in present tense. If we want it to stay the way it is, then we have to lock it. More unlocking pages in just a few minutes. On this page, we're going to place a, a viewport containing the zoomed extents view from model mode, and then we'll add a new page and make it letter size and place a zoomed in view on it. Doing these things will demonstrate several of the tips and tricks that I mentioned. So we'll add a viewport here quickly. Um, I want view one, I want extents, I want a border, I want a description, not illuminance on table, no, no, no. This is going to be illuminance calculations. There, okay. Now I'd like the drawing to be centered a little better within the viewport. If I right click in the viewport, I get this familiar menu. Notice the zoom and pan options. Zooming, zoom in and out, control home or control end, panning, it's control plus your left, right, up, down arrows on your keyboard. So I'm going to pan up. Well, let's see, that barely moved it, right? So control. So I also have an option of I could make this smaller, right? so maybe that looks better. Change your dimensions different ways. Now let's say that I want a new page that's 8.5 by 11, ordinary letter size paper instead of the D size paper that we have for the rest of the report. First I'll select the command over here to insert a copy of the current page. Uh, insert copy of current page. Right. So now we are on page two. This is a copy of page one. And of course it's D-size. To change the size of this page, I click on the Report Properties button here. It has a hammer on it, just like our edit commands. Click on that. So first I make sure that the page name here, page name is page two. If it isn't, then I need to change the page number until the page name is correct. Notice the number doesn't match the page name, and that's because the page number one is the master page. Right, so this is page two, that's the one that I want. Notice this button up here, apply page size changes to all unlocked pages. Because I want to apply the change I'm about to make to this page only, I unselect that option. See how the icon changed? Now for the paper size, I select letter, 
right? Eight and a half by eleven. Now I want to point out that the order in which I did things here is important. You go to the page that you want to change. Make sure that the status of this apply page size changes button is correct for what you want to do, and then make the changes for that page. And this is because as soon as I make the changes to the paper size, those changes are implemented according to what is selected here. When I'm done making changes, I click OK. Uh-oh, do you see what happened? Everything on this page is sized for D-sized paper and is therefore way too big for this letter size page. Now to fix the title block, I have a couple of options. I could try scaling the title block to fit on smaller paper. The scale command is in the Drawing and Schedules toolkit. It's this one, right? So I can scale a single thing, a window, or all, but everything gets scaled the same way in both directions. So that's a problem for this project because to go from D size paper to letter size paper, the scaling factor for the width is different from the scaling factor for the length. So I could scale it in one direction to make it fit, but not both directions. So it wouldn't look that good. So another option is I can delete the drawing entities. I can go delete all and right click. Whoops. Do that again. Delete all. Hit enter. All right, so now the, the drawing entities are gone. And that leaves the viewport and the image port as well as their contents intact, and they can be resized and moved. All right, so this guy I'm going to move to about there just to start with. This one. And then I'll zoom extents. It needs to be resized to fit, of course. And this could be resized better. So you see how you can make these things fit better. And then I could bring in another title block. I can I can be I can bring in a title block that I built in CAD or build it here and then make everything else fit better. Now since we have the extents view on page one, we said that we wanted to um, this smaller page to have a zoomed in view of one particular part of the calculation. So to do this you might be tempted to zoom in on the grid. This brings us to one of the problems that folks sometimes encounter with large projects and zooming. As I mentioned a few minutes ago, there are two ways to zoom and pan in Page Builder, each with different results. First of all, if you zoom, zoom with your wheel, which is what I'm doing now, zooming in and out, notice zooming with the wheel, I'm zooming the whole page, not just what's in the viewport. Right? And so if I zoom extents up here, that's zooming extents on the whole page. Panning with the wheel does the same thing, right? It's panning back and forth. And if I tried to pan just in here, I, I held down my mouse wheel to pan back and forth, and I got this menu, which is not what I want. If I want to keep the page appearance as it is, not zoomed or panned, so the page is like this, but rather just zoom in for a close image in the viewport on, say, a particular set of calc points, as we want to do, then you use your keyboard commands for zooming that we saw a few minutes ago. To zoom in, it's control home. To zoom out, it's control end. So click in here. Sometimes you, you, you try to do it and it doesn't respond. Um, you need to click in there and then try again or right click and, and get this menu and then you can escape and then it sort of wakes it up and it says, hey, pay attention to me here. So I'm zooming in, but look at that. No numbers. Okay, so I'm zoomed in close enough that I should be able to see the details of this calculation grid, but there are no numbers. And that's because in the original view, we were zoomed out so far that the numbers could not be displayed. They were too small. So far, I mean, not even dots, right? They were, they were just too small, so they're not displayed at all. The details that are too small to see in a zoomed out view like that, such as calculation grid details, if you're zoomed out that far that you can't see them, then they're not brought into the viewport either. So we can't see them even if we do zoom in.
So how can we correct for this? Well, what we need is a zoomed in view in model mode that we can select for placement here in the viewport in page builder. So let's go back to model mode. So first I'm going to create another view using view manager. I'm going to, I'm going to call it close up view. Click add, cascade and resize. Okay, so here's my close-up view. Uh, a little closer here so I can actually see those. Now, so with two views, I can put either one of them or both of them into my page builder project. We already know that. Now, some, I know that some folks don't like having multiple views that are smaller than full screen because they can't see as much as they want to see and that makes working more difficult. There's an easy solution for that. Make one of your views full screen like that. Okay, and I zoomed, you can zoom or you can click redraw to fill in the blanks. Now this view I'm going to zoom out a little bit more. That fills the entire screen. And if I want to go to the other view, since it's not here easily for me to just click in, then I press Control Tab on my keyboard. And I'll zoom extents there so I can go back and forth. Control Tab goes back and forth between my two views. So even though you can only see one at a time, that way they're both open in model mode and therefore they're both selectable in Page Builder to include it in a report. Uh, so let's go back to Page Builder and we'll change this view to be, one, to be the zoomed in view with actual numbers. So of course, you know how to do that. Right click and select properties and then up here I'm going to select close up view. And I'm going to select display, not extents, because that would be the way zoomed out view, right? We even so we want to cl click display so that it looks just like it does in in uh, uh, model mode. And illuminance calculations is fine. We'll click OK. See that? All right. So so now perhaps I want to do. I want to do. Center that a little better. Zoom in. Oh yeah. Maybe I need to make this bigger. See, I can work with this. There we go. So you can decide. You know, you're you're going to be limited in how much you can show because it's zoomed in and has to fit in a certain size area. But there it is. So I want to point out that what's shown here in viewport is still linked back to what was shown in the associated view in model mode. If you've selected to show display as I did. So if you change what that view looks like in model mode, in other words, you change what is displayed, you pan or zoom or something, that'll change what you see here in page builder. They are still tied to each other. So if you want to show two different calc grids in page builder, then each one needs to be in its own view in model mode.